Hi everyone, I wanted to sh come on today to share a dream that I had this morning. Um, it was of the rapture actually, and uh, while it was a symbolic dream, it has a couple of really important messages that I wanted to share with you. Um, first I'll tell you the messages, and then I'll ex uh, explain the dream and then what I think it means as well. Um, so the first two messages that I got from the stream, the, most, the biggest messages are, first of all, um, that we need to be prepared to leave and really trust in the Lord when we do leave that everything will be provided for us and that we should be able to ready to leave at a moment's notice because in the dream when it happened it was uh, the rapture came at a time when I really wasn't expecting to go and um, the second thing that uh, message that came from that stream is that our pets will be taken with us and the Lord is going to find a way to to provide our pets to us um, in heaven so um, I found this really encouraging, um, and I'd like to ex explain to you um, what I saw in my dream. So in my dream, I'm living in a temporary dwelling place, like a house, and the house has two floors, and I'm living in, in a, with a community of people, which I believe represent believers in Jesus Christ. Um, and in this place, uh, everybody has their own bedroom, and um, I had just woke up in the morning, um, and I was barely awake, and um, I was aware that I was packing to go on a trip to Israel. And so, um, as I'm packing, uh, I turn around, and in walks this man that I know in real life who is Jewish. Um, he represent, and he was a rabbi in this dream, and I believe this represents Jesus. And he's coming around to everybody in the room, saying, "We need to go. It's time to go right now. We have to leave. We have to make our plane. So out the door right now." And I looked at him and I said, but I'm not ready. Um, I said, I, I'm almost ready, but I'm, I'm not ready. And I just need a couple more minutes. And he's like, no, you need to go now. We're leaving now. And as he turned, he, he was really firm with me. He turned, he walked out the door and everyone started to walk out their bedrooms and down the stairs and followed him immediately. And I was the only one left behind, um, in my bedroom trying to grab a couple of things. And, um, I'm trying to grab my contact lenses because I can't, I'm like, well, I can't see without my contact lenses. What am I going to do? And, um, that's, and also to grab my cross, which was in the drawer. Um, so I'm looking for the things that I usually put on last, um, right before I leave. Um, and I couldn't find my contact lenses and I opened the drawer drawer to get my cross out and my cross and all my gold jewelry that was in the drawer drawer is in pieces it's like in little tiny broken pieces and mixed with dust and so all of the the worldly jewelry that i had um was was basically no good anymore and so i'm like well i guess i don't need my jewelry um and i turned to the man who was helping me look now there was a man who was helping me look for things and helping me get out the door and um he was dressed in white and i believe he represents my guardian angel and I looked at him when I found my jewelry like this. I'm like, well, what does this mean? And he says, look, you're gonna, you'll have everything you need in Israel. He goes, just go. They'll have what you need in Israel. Don't worry about it. They'll have those things there. And I, he said, just go. And I said, and I looked at him and I realized he was right, that there was nothing in this world, in this place that I needed that couldn't be provided for over there and I just really needed to go to make sure that I went with the rest of the group so I ran out the door with my little bag and barefoot um and the next scene I'm on the plane and as I'm on the plane what I become aware of is the entire community is there with me and everybody is looking at me and a man stands up on the plane someone that I know um, and he starts to say how wrong I was for making everyone wait and how rude it was of me and how cons inconsiderate it was and how I was, um, you know, I shouldn't have done that. And, and, um, you know, of course he's right. Uh, and, um, you know, this is in front of the entire community of people I lived with. And so as he's speaking, I, I, I'm looking at myself responding to this and I'm not upset by this I'm just really sorry and um what I do is I begin to apologize I say how sorry I am for causing everybody um you know inconvenience I hope everyone will forgive me I hope we can just move on from this you know and I'm 
asking for mercy and, you know, and forgiveness from everyone. And what I believe this represents is um, the Bema Seat judgments. I believe that right after we're raptured, we will be judged for what we've done, good and bad, in our life. And I think it will be a very public thing. And it may be, um, maybe parts of it might even be embarrassing or painful to watch ourselves as we sin. Um, but I do believe that Jesus will forgive us and um, we'll move on from there, which is exactly what happened in my dream. In my dream, the second I said how sorry I was and, and hoped everyone would just let it go, immediately after that, uh, the plane, sh the reward came and the plane expanded. It became much bigger. Um, it was a heat, all of a sudden it was a huge plane, which there's never been a plane this big. Um, and next to me was my pet. Um, and in real life I have, um, a dog and two cats, but in this dream I had a cat and two dogs. And so I'm really close to my dog in real life and not so much my cats. But next to me in this dream was the cat and my two dogs were someplace else. So um, I'm looking at this, my pet, and um, it's got a, an airplane seat for itself. Um, and it's lying, this cat is lying on top of um, a, like the airplane tray. And um, it's been brought a luxurious cat meal, uh, like a fish and just the best thing that it could ever possibly want. And um, it's also been provided a fountain for water, which if you know anything about cats, they love to drink out of running water. They really do not like bowl water that much. Um, and it's just like rolling around on its back, super happy. And it was the happiest little pet that could ever be. And I just uh, realized that, um, you know, this is amazing. Like this reward for me to have my, my pet there and not only have it there, but have it, have it be super happy and provided for was just incredible. And the amount of joy that I realized that th I couldn't see every, all of the reward that there was there, but I had a sense that it was a, a huge, huge, huge amount of reward for being there um, in, on this plane with these people uh, and being believers in Jesus Christ and that. Um, the reward we're going to receive is beyond anything that we could possibly imagine. So I think this is really a, a really cool dream. And it was very comforting for me because I have been a little worried about what would happen to my pets. Um, I do feel that the Lord will give a knows our heart and he knows what we, what we love and he'll have our favorites um, there in heaven when we get there. But I really just wanted to share this with you because I thought, well, maybe someone else would um, have those worries too. And I felt like the Lord answered my prayers with this dream. So um, I hope everyone is blessed by this and um, I hope you have a wonderful day.